everybody, welcome back to Critical Mass. Today we have a movie review where we went and saw Maleficent 2. And I have a tale of tragedy and woe to a tell you. A tale of tragedy and woe. So let's start. We went on Wednesday to see Zoolander, or not Zoolander, Zombieland 2. <laughs> Zombieland 2. But when we get there, it's a double feature. Yeah, except they play part one and then part two. And you've seen my imposing stature, my, my physique. You can tell that my day job is very, uh, you know, strenuous. Because look, so I have to get some rest. So I got to cut out before Zombieland 2 comes on. Okay, fast forward next day, we're going to see Maleficent 2. I get there too early. I check the tickets. Oh, it's only playing in IMAX. So it's a $19 ticket. And then I forgot my wallet. And you know what the worst thing was? All that being told is, I paid for both movies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what the worst thing was? What? When we got in our seat, we had to watch Maleficent 2. <laughs> Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started at the cinema. Now here's your review clip. So Maleficent 2 brings back the original cast and it carries on the story where the princess is in love with the, the prince with true love's kiss and all that garbage of <laughs> all the typical Disney movies. And Maleficent has been turned back into an evil demon from the moors. And it's all because of a story that they told, the story of the spindle and the story even though she was the hero of the story. The story got changed over time to where now she's the villain and I'm kind of going over time it's been like six years doesn't stories changing a whole system take longer than six years to go from a, a, a hero to a villain but but you think the story being changed is by the person changing it is the queen she has a lot of influence and you know six years of a queen telling the story then but the people she's telling it to don't they were there. <laughs> like it's it's not like we have the internet and it's like Russia telling us and we're it, it's just it's weird. But all that aside, she's the villain. They want to get married and of course the queen turns out. Spoiler review. Are we doing a spoiler review? Kind of happy yeah, with this. Well, because you're going to go see this and you're going to say, no, no. "Oh, don't go see it." You're gonna, <laughs> if you see it, you're going to say, okay, well, they're telling us right away who the bad guy is, yeah. and there's no suspense whatsoever. So th this is not a no, real yeah, we can You can figure out who the evil person is in this, of course, right off the bat. But there's just there was so much lacking in this film. To me, it just seemed to drag and drag and drag. So... Let's, okay, how about some good things first? Okay. Okay. I thought it looked great. There was, uh, okay, good things, good things. Al Alice in Wonderland. Picture Alice in Wonderland, uh, the new versions with the colorful, you know, Lots fairy of tale color CGI goblins and fairies and stuff like this. Very pretty. Very pretty. Angelina Jolie looked great as Maleficent, yeah. I thought. Uh, also, uh, her kin, uh, her tribe. The Fae. They sh do they show this in the trailer? I believe they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maleficent's people, yeah. uh, they look great too. So everything looks great. But you know what I found? This was like watching the old uh, Hercules show on TV or... Uh, what was the the girl one? Uh, uh, Xena, Warrior Princess. Xena, Warrior Princess. Like, the things were happening on the screen, but there was no emotion whatsoever. <laughs> it was like, there, okay, there's a tear going down her face, so I guess she's sad. I don't feel the emotion that she's sad, but that's how the whole film was. No emotion whatsoever. No. It, it, it was lacking a lot, honestly. It... Um, like, I guess the actors did the best they could with the roles. Well, how hard is of? it for Angelina Jolie to do this role where all she has to do is, like, move her eye, keep her face, like, poker face, and, and a, then and smile a, once and a fake in a while. smile like this. And try and look like it's a creepy smile. That's all it has to do. But it, the, the plot line, like, the whole opening sequence that I'm watching in this film, I'm going... 
Oh, can we get on with it, please? Because there's like a chase scene, and it's like they're, they're this little porcupine thing, which looks like Sonic, except it's not blue, and it looks better than the Sonic movie Sonic. So I will say that I'll give it credit for that. And it runs like Sonic. It does the spin thing even, and it's it it goes and gets this crown. Looks like a circle. Almost looks like Sonic. What a weird thing, right? But they're chasing this crown because they're trying to set her up to be in this particular place for a happy thing, a celebration. But it goes on for like three minutes of this little chasing and bouncing off boulders and trees and things. And I just, I had to say, stop. Get on with the movie. You're boring me. And every part of this, everybody in this character, in this movie, talks like this. They talk, all right, it's, it's time we have to do this, Maleficent. You have to be part of us. We are like this. Oh, they are evil. We have to take them out. It's humankind we're looking at. Like, how do you act like that? That's not acting. That's reading a line on a script, off script somewhere, or and rehearsing. It's Not only did the beginning drag, but at the end, it was like <laughs> watching the last movie, The Lord of the Rings, where it took about 45 minutes. Well, this felt like double that. <laughs> Already you saw a movie that you weren't completely impressed with and then they drag it on forever and ever and ever It's at one point at the end There's this big wrap-up scene and the Maleficent and her daughter are walking out of the woods area towards the ceremony And they're like 150 yards away. They show us the whole walk the whole walk is filmed like And then a couple characters over here smiling it took like a minute and a half to get to there. And then they, then they do the ceremony. I'm just pulling my hair out going, this has no pacing of a movie. The big battle scene at the end between the humans were so contrived and really never would have happened. No. The whole human defense never would have worked. It, it just, it was dumb. Yeah, and so if you are, I'm going to say, if you're a guy and you're watching this, the whole <laughs> battle scene, which guys tend to like, okay? And, and some girls. You're gonna, you're gonna watch this and you're gonna say, wow, this is crap. Yeah. I'm not enjoying this at all. Why is it taking so long? Because I don't want to watch this anymore. And no matter how many people are wiped out, they still look like they have the same amount of people the whole time. So, admittedly, this movie was not no. for me. It's more of a kid's battle too, right? Yeah. Like, my wife would have eaten this movie up. Like, she would sit there enthralled and watch this movie and she, at the end she would love it. Yeah. However, no. 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 For, for us, it was... especially. I just saw Zombieland 2. He didn't get to see it. I saw Zombieland 2. You saw my review. I love Zombieland 2. And then I saw this the very next night and now I can't wait to the next movie I see because I got to get this taste out of my mouth because I was bored. My, my big takeaway is if you watch Joker and you love Joker because every second of it was filled with emotion and depth, okay, <laughs> you know, you, this, this is the polar opposite of that. But if you're on Netflix and you're watching uh, Once Upon a Time uh, every day and you love it, well, hey, go see this movie because you're going to yeah. enjoy it. Made for TV Christmas movies, made for TV Disney movies. Those, that's kind of what this movie is. Because if you're okay with that, it was a good movie. Yeah. If you want a little more depth, skip this. If you want story, if and, you want good acting, yeah, only and watch action. it. Only watch it when your wife makes you watch it, <laughs> or your significant significant other. Because I, you know, admittedly we knew that this was not going to be for us. I didn't know that. I liked the first one. I, I was okay with the first one. I wish it would have gone even darker. But I understand it's Disney. They're not going to do that. But this one completely threw that one away. And they made the preview of this one look like she's going to be evil now. And they're going to have this huge epic battle. And this is what's going to go on. No. So, uh, I'd say... Uh, uh, you like the TV movies? Go see this. Uh, You'll like it. If you like a little more depth, take a pass. Well, give it a ranking. Out of 10, what would you give it? 
<laughs> well, I have to split it now. If you, if you like the TV movies, this would probably be an eight. But if you like personally, your choice. Me? You. I'm the audience You're member? You're the audience member. You gotta give your opinion of, this, of your thoughts. To me, that was a six. Wow, way higher than I would give it. I gave it like, mm, I'm, struggling for, I'm struggling with a five. I wanna give it a four. I was, there were parts in this, most of this movie I was sitting there going, come on, do something. Like even when we meet the other demons and they're flying around, I was like bored. At that point, I should be excited, and they should be showing me something that makes me feel for Melissa. Finn. Melissa, Finn? <laughs> <laughs> but should feel for her character. She's found her people after all these years, and there's all kinds of them around, and different races of them. And it didn't. It didn't. It, the CGI at that point got probably the worst in the movie in that scene, and the acting just didn't live up to anything to me. I, I'm, I'm going to give it a four. I did not enjoy it whatsoever. And I will never watch it again.